The federal government on Thursday said it has succeeded in tracing 3,550 people who came in contact with patients infected with COVID-19 in the country. The Director General of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazu, who disclosed this at a press conference organized in Abuja by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, said the 3,550 people were being monitored for symptoms of coronavirus. The NCDC said this as they were concerns in the country over the rising COVID-19 cases, which increased to 190 on Thursday. Hekwazu had at a press conference on Tuesday said government was searching for 5,000 people who came in contact with COVID-19 positive patients. The Director General who said there was an urgent need to get such people and prevent community transmission of the virus said many of the contacts came from abroad and gave wrong phone numbers and addresses on the flight they about it. On joining us live via telephone interview is Dr. Folajimi Adebowale. Good morning, Dr. Adebowale. Good morning. How are you doing? Okay, thank you. I'm fine. Uh, now we are seeing cases of, from four new cases a day or even 10 new cases a day and it is going higher. Is this a case of getting worse before it gets better? Um, well, we need to compare data before we talk about getting worse. Like I said before, and I will clearly state again, Africa, Nigeria has been very, very lucky. Within 30 days, Europe and Asian countries were having thousands. We are currently less than 200. I believe we've been very fortunate and there's really no need for panic. However, we still need to take care. But clearly, if you plot the graph of our data, we are clearly not rising as fast as what you would call a viral infection should be. All right, so should we be encouraged by the fact that there are clearly more tests being carried out also? There are more tests being carried out, and you must also realize that the tests being done is clearly among where they can get a high possibility of positive People were complaining that uh, we are not testing enough, we are not testing enough. The category of people being tested are those who are most likely going to come out positive. As at March 26th, 856 people have been tested. Mm -hmm. And as at then, we had less than 100. So I, I'm very optimistic about the situation that we will not have the kind of situation we are having in Europe much more the government and private agencies have really stepped up their game on this matter. Mm. And, and I expect some very fantastic outcomes. Dr. Adebowale, when compared with the UK, where we hear of a target of 250,000 tests to be carried out in a week, how reflective is our testing of the actual situation on the ground, in your own opinion? Um, like I said earlier, the category of people that were tested in the last four weeks were where you will most likely find the highest uh, possibility of getting a positive. By the time you test the general public, this um, probability of getting the, a positive will reduce. So if you look at the ratio of tests done to the number of positives, we've done, we've, or we've gone through a phase where you can have the highest if you widen the gap, if you widen more tests, the, the ratio will reduce. Well, doctor, there have been also arguments that why we are not seeing uh, too many results in terms of people who have tested positive is because there are no access, uh, so much access to testing kits, especially for the ordinary Nigerian who is out there. Do you agree with that position? Okay, two things. Number one, let's be clear. The test kits are limited. So when you have limited resources, you need to be smart about how you use it. You don't throw it anywhere, everywhere. I'll give you a simple correlate. If I was going to run an HIV test in the community, I will probably go to areas where I will have a high possibility of finding a lot of HIV, high risk communities where they have prostitution, where they have underage sex, where they basically live a rough life you will get a high possibility of um, a positive in that area. Likewise, in this case, if you have a limited test kit, it is very smart by NDCBC to limit testing to where 
you will possibly find these high cases. People that have traveled, people that have been in contact with who that have traveled. The basic symptoms of COVID-19 are something we are familiar with in this environment before now. A chest infection, a malaria infection can give you similar cases. Some people for psychological reasons will develop symptoms. So it is not smart for them to just say, let's test everybody. Mm -hmm. The second thing we must also realize is that between that, that category of people that have been tested, we are still having less than 20% coming out positive. So if you widen the category of cases, you will still not get that high possibility of getting, of getting plenty positive cases. I don't know if you, I made my point clear. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now let's move a bit from that to the shutdown policy. We've seen some states are now, you know, joining in shutdown. How effective uh, and how effective and efficient is this policy of shutdown in terms of slowing down the spread of the disease? All right. Um, let's look at this timeline. Uh, February 27th was when the first case was announced. And he had arrived in Nigeria February 13th, right. and we effected a shutdown by March 30. That gave the virus like 43 days head start above and before us. So clearly the shutdown was late. But if you look at the risk benefit situation, because we are not really having the kind of situation they have in Europe, it's better late than never. So if we look at that spread right now, because right now we're having much more community. We don't have much more returning cases, returning cases. It's more of case of contact to contact. This is the best time to, um, what do I call it? It is the best time to actually, not the best time, but at least better late than ever that we effect a shutdown mm -hmm. so that we limit the viral spread. Mm -hmm. Anybody who has been infected at the moment will not be contacting other people, will not be spreading. In such a case now, within 14 days, it dies off within that person. It runs through the entire course. And it will be fine at the end of the day by God's grace. So it is a very smart move. Social distancing is one of the ways to combat a viral uh, epidemic. All right, having said that, uh, Doctor, we've heard all kinds of things in terms of intervention. We've heard the use of chloroquine uh, and all that. Now, should we be looking into a vaccine to intervene, or are we essentially confronted with a waiting game? Well, the role of a vaccine cannot be underestimated. However, you must know that these things take time to come up with. Even for us to physically say that, oh, we have a drug that solves this issue. It takes a while. Layers and layers of testing has to be done. For a fact, hydroxychloroquine has shown some promising re results, but it still needs to be further tested. We need to stay within the wide population. So it, it is not out of place, but let's give this uh, researchers time. They'll come with the results. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, Social distancing will seriously limit transmission from one person to another. All right. Thank you so very much, Dr. Foladjimi Adebowale, for joining us this morning and sharing your insights there. It's always a pleasure. Thank you.